Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, I am Chris Theodore M. Colico from R1A and today we will be discussing about the Filipino grievance against Governor Wood by Gregorio Zayde. The historical background of the topic, the content of the historical information of the topic, and how the historical information fit to the grand narrative of Philippine history. When we think of Gregorio Zayde, there is only one thing that comes to our mind. That is the fact that he is one of the country's foremost and well-known historians. He studied in the University of the Philippines for his Master of Arts class during 1931 and the University of Santo Tomas for his Bachelor of Arts and Doctor in Philosophy way back 1934. In fact, without him, there would be no such thing as International Association of Historians of Asia. One of his greatest works was the Filipino Grievances against Governor Wood. This is a document which was a form of protest or impeachment against Governor General Leonard Wood, as the primary sources say. It can be found in the documentary sources of Philippine history written by Zaidi himself. General Leonard Wood arrived in the Philippines in 1903. He was appointed governor of the Miro province, compromising the southern islands and Mindanao. The document was about the phase of then critical situation where the constitutional representatives of the Filipino people met to deliberate upon the present difficulties existing in the government of the Philippine Islands. It sought to determine how to best preserve the supremacy and majesty of the laws and to safeguard the rights and liberties of our people. Having faith in the sense of justice of the people of the United States and inspired by its patriotic example in the early days of its history. Most importantly, this document was written to make publicly known Filipinos most vigorous protests against the arbitrary acts and usurpations of the present Governor General of the Philippine Islands at that time, particularly against Executive Order No. 37. Aside from being the head of the civil government, Wood was also responsible for five districts and the commanding general of the troops in the Department of Mindanao and Sulu as well. Major General Leonard Wood was sent to Philippines as Governor General by Calvin College, the president then by the USA to fulfill their promise since the goal has been rich loyalty from Philippines. United States of America has promised that our country will be conserved and developed for the benefit of people. In return, Filipinos were patient and diligent to the task of meeting the conditions given to them because they trusted the Americans. Aware of General Wood's participation in the liberation or emancipation of Cuba, Filipinos expected that the spirit of cooperation would be maintained. Political emancipation would be complete, but the reality is that there was a train of usurpation and arbitrary acts, resulted in curtailment of our autonomy and destruction of our constitutional system, reversal of America's Philippine policy. Come to think of it that while the Filipinos were not aware of the real story and true history of the war and situation of the Philippines during the late 19th and early 20th century, the thought that the future of the Philippines has preoccupied not only its inhabitants who were the most interested party but also were convinced that governing was going bad. The something there leaves much to be desired. The very partisans of the ruling government agree that necessary evil exists, suspecting that they are ridiculous and their lamentable ideas are backwards. The Governor General who benefited from the country and badly governed it were to be guilty. The same ones who are very much interested in making believe that there are everything is wonderfully well. Those who must maintain that everything is good and cannot be better so that no one would disturb them in their profitable nirvana they have established. They are like doctors who want homeopathic, a very slow treatment who locking patients would like to lull and dandle a chronic ailment so that they may continue collecting and eating at the expenses of the patient and his suffering. Let us now discuss the historical information about the Filipino grievances against Governor Wood by Gregorio Zayde. Filipino grievances against General Wood included not only the protest itself but also all the arbitrary acts of the said general which Filipinos did not agree upon with. First, Wood has refused his consent to laws which were the most wholesome and necessary for the country. He has set no legal authority and responsibility for the Philippine department heads and rather substituted his constitutional advisors for a group of military assigns without legal standing in the government and not responsible to the people. Second, he has invalidated the 
policy of Filipinizing the service of the government by appointing Americans into the government positions even when Filipinos of proven competence were more capable. Third, corruption was rampant. Wood provided the power of the legislature to pass the annual appropriation law but only revive items in the law of the prior year. After vetoing the corresponding items the current Appropriation Act, in contravention to the law, Wood has made appointments to the positions and authorized the payment of salaries. Therefore, after having vetoed the appropriations of such salaries and even used certain public funds to grant additional compensation to public officials in clear violation law. Fourth, he encroached into the checks and balances power of the branches of the government. Wood has unduly interfered in the administration of justice. He has refused to obtain the advice of the Senate in making appointments where such advice is required by the law. He has refused to submit the Senate appointment for the vacancies occurring during the races of the legislature and continued in the office nominees whose appointment had been rejected by the Senate. Finally, Wood in the administration of affairs in Mindanao brought about a condition which has given rise to dispute and conflict between certain groups of Christian and Mohammedan Filipinos and even created strained relations between resident Americans and Filipinos. He has strived on the excuse of getting the government out of business. To dispose of all companies capitalized by the government worth many millions of the people's money to powerful American interests. Now, with all of these facts, what can we interpret regarding the document? How the historical information of the document fits to the grand narrative of the Philippine history? First, through this document, we can interpret that this caused strong antagonism between Filipinos' political leaders, governor general, and the masses themselves. It enhanced the nationalistic spirit of the people and their allocation to handpicked technocrats, career civil servants, military officials, and even loyal friends in the business world. This fits to the narrative of history that, in a bureaucracy which has always been assaulted of personal interests and very low official rewards, the situation became an open invitation for many to become masters of the people and to feather their nests whenever possible. Number two, it complicates the relationship between politicization and performance, in that the former may also lead to desirable activities rather than just corruption and maladministration. This fits the narrative in our history that the political problem is the fundamental problem in the Philippines. The solution of this scheme will at the same time resolve the equally important question of the economic development of the country. With proper safeguards, the Filipino people should at least be allowed to formulate their own constitution and elect their own governor general or even at least to have Filipino politicians in the government. The Filipino people are ready and eager to cooperate to the fullest extent but Leonard Wood would not listen. This fits the narrative in our own history that sometimes cooperating alone could not be possible to because even in our own yard, Aguinaldo and his army would receive lukewarm support from the Filipino masses rather than attempting to win over the masses by introducing programs they favored. Aguinaldo, a member of Cavite's economic elite, merely pursued policies palatable to his own social class. Number four. It speaks of a lot how Filipinos has always demonstrated that they were dissatisfied with a certain government because it reinforced the power of the local elites and ignored their own aspirations in particular. The historical narrative that the ideology of the Philippine Republic to the extent that it had an ideology fits that it provided an intellectual justification for such self-interested activity. The information found in the document fits the narrative that it was in the first half of the 20th century more than at any other time that Filipino nationality, the shared sense and sentiment of being Filipino was formed. It was in the American stare that much of what subjectively constitutes nation for Filipino was reformed. Its mutation into a canonical civil nationalism under American auspices has yet to be adequately examination of Mindanao from the Philippines. Lastly, this has always been reiterated as a threat, but it is never shown why and many come to believe it. In the government with a mission superior to that, always it to be said and shouted and does not comprehend its reach. That is to say that there to govern is to misgovern, that the whole organization is so corrupt, that disorder is its normal state, its second nature in such a way order is abnormal there and would only be perturbing factor. 
in order to represent ourselves in the name of a nation that was colonized and wants people to forget the loss of their liberty and independence by giving us civilization, we must have endowed with real prestige, profound moral convictions, with great love for humanity, with an exquisite tact and nice prudence. At the end of the day, we learn from the mistakes of the past. As quoted by George Santillana, those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat their mistakes.